We all know the iconic Little Tramp, masterful icon of the cinema. But did you know that his original appearance contains a connection, an Easter egg if you will, that connects the Tramp to his original stage persona? Seen in only a portion of one film and quickly discarded, this detail correlates a direct line from Charlie's visual evolution from stage to screen. When 24-year-old Charles Chaplin joined Max Sennett's insanely popular Keystone Film Company in late 1913, he stepped off the vaudeville music hall stage and in front of a camera lens. He was very unsure of this new medium and, at first, only accepted Sennett's offer of $150 a week to build his reputation and return to the stage as an international star. At this time, cinema wasn't yet appreciated as an art form, simply viewed as a cheap alternative to the legitimate theater for the lower class. Sennett spotted Charlie on stage, performing his popular drunk routine on Carnot's Tour of America in 1913. The heavy makeup that Charlie wore led Mac to believe the Englishman was much older than he actually was, more in line with actors like his leading star at the time, Ford Sterling. Sterling was threatening to leave Keystone and start his own company, which led Mac to start looking out for replacements in case it ever happened. Which it did, well, briefly anyway. Mac Sennett sent Charlie a job offer via telegram, and Charlie anxiously accepted the job in Flickers. After Charlie started at Keystone at the end of December 1913, Sennett didn't give him much to do for about two weeks. He asked for the newcomer to simply walk around and observe, hoping he would begin to get comfortable and understand how the system there worked before stepping in front of a camera. In Charlie's first film for Keystone, called Making a Living, he plays the villain, out to steal the scoop from rival news reporter Henry Learman. He was not happy with his first film appearance, especially because he claimed director Learman cut out his best material. Even though Charlie received positive reviews, he considered leaving, having a tough time dealing with the transition to film acting from the stage. And, while Sennett took a liking to him, Chaplin almost immediately started getting into disagreements with directors, causing delay and discord among cast and crew. Leading lady and Sennett's on-again, off-again girlfriend, Mabel Normand, encouraged Charlie to stay and he was enlisted to appear as a drunk in her film Mabel's Strange Predicament. It was in this film we would see the first appearance of the then-unnamed Tramp character. We've all heard the legend, small hat, baggy pants, tiny jacket, oversized shoes, every part of his personality was a contradiction. As the decades march forward, the character would receive unending discussion on its sheer brilliance. Yet, on that fateful day of January 6th, 1914, seems like a hastily assembled costume, one that could hardly fathom the impact it would soon have. Even though Mabel wasn't credited, she directed this film along with many others for Keystone a true pioneer that's often overlooked when discussing early woman filmmakers. Although they did have disagreements, she was instrumental in helping Charlie adapt to this new medium and deserves all the respect in the world for that. Without Mabel Norman, it stands to chance that Charlie may have left Hollywood early on, depriving the world of one of the greatest creators to ever step in front of the lens. In the hotel lobby scene that opens Mabel's strange predicament, you can see Charlie with very heavy laugh lines drawn onto his face, along with dark makeup highlighting his cheekbones. This footage presents what must have been going through Charlie's mind when he appeared on set for only his second screen appearance. Not only did this makeup resemble the drunk he portrayed during his vaudeville tours with Carno, but it also showed Charlie's attempt to make himself look more like what Sennett expected 
an actor much older than 24 years old. Details like this were almost impossible to decipher before the digital restorations of the Keystone films, finally released in 2010. Worn out, dupey prints like this were the only way to see the film, often with foreign and inaccurate subtitles as well. This is how I originally saw Mabel's Strange Predicament, on a budget tape released in the archival, friendly EP mode. Thanks to the restoration, this easter egg discovery adds more context to Charlie's trial and error attempts at evolving his Carno stage persona into the world famous Little Tramp. Chaplin persuaded Mac and Mabel to let him ad-lib a bit in this opening scene, allowing time for audiences to get familiar with his daft new persona. This was rare for Sennett, who often kept sequences moving at a breakneck pace in fear the audience would start to get bored, or even worse, decipher that the story made little sense. It's unfortunate, though, that the opening sequence, where Charlie enters the hotel and trips over a cuspidor, is seemingly still lost to history. This sequence is mentioned in his autobiography, which he noted made the cast and crew laugh out loud while filming. We should be thrilled it exists at all, though as this film was considered lost until a sole print turned up in the 1960s. Mabel's Strange Predicament was filmed over the course of a week, January 6th through January 12th. Filming was halted due to rainstorms that were causing disruption since these films were made on open-air sets, with Muslim tarps to diffuse the harsh sunlight. During the break from filming on Predicament, on January 10th, Senate enlisted Charlie, Learman, and crew to head down to Venice to make something up at the Children's Soapbox Derby Race. This one reeler, later titled Kid Auto Races at Venice, was filmed in 45 minutes and is essentially Charlie just ad-libbing in front of a crowd that has no idea who he is, yet. A historical document if there ever was one. Senate loved filming at public events as they made good background visuals for whatever vague story the cast would make up. This one was no exception. Charlie kept his same outfit from predicament, but dropped a notable detail. The Carno-inspired, inebriate makeup was gone. It seems he quickly realized it wasn't working for the Tramp as it did for his vaudeville inebriate. Kid Auto Races is credited as the first appearance of the Tramp. And while it was certainly the first released on February 7th, portions of Predicament were shot first, making these scenes the first time Charlie donned the costume in front of a camera. Predicament would be released two days after Kid Auto Races on February 9th, 1914. In Predicament, you notice that the lobby scenes with Charlie all feature his Carno drunk makeup, while the upstairs scenes do not. This tells us the upstairs shots were filmed sometime after, when Charlie discarded the heavy makeup, reducing it to simply the mustache, eyebrows, and slight makeup to pronounce his cheekbones. His mustache is also thick and bushy, something he would evolve away from, trimming it down so it was easier to read his expressions. There's also this still shot of the Tramp in regular shoes, although these shoes never actually appear in the film itself. It's speculated this was just a publicity shot, perhaps taken after Charlie came back from lunch before switching back into his costumed Tramp shoes. While certainly a small detail, this discovery helps us see exactly what Charlie was thinking at the time, trial and error, taking what he had learned on the stage and evolving it to work on the motion picture screen. Next time you watch Mabel's Strange Predicament, I hope you will enjoy it on a whole new level, viewing it as more than an archaic keystone farce, but as a sketchbook for a legend to test his talents and adapt to the industry he would soon conquer. I'm Nigel Dreiner, and thank you for watching.